Today's project is my cousin Richard's Ford F-150. He is experiencing severe vibrations. His chief complaint was excessive vibration during acceleration. He bought universal joints but didn't have the tools or understanding of the job. He is meticulous and loves to learn, but he lacks the experience to go it alone. Before the drive shaft can be removed safely, the truck must be secured to prevent it from rolling by setting the parking brakes, or chalking the wheels, or it could even be jacked and placed on jack stands. The drive shaft is the link between the transmission parking lock and the rear wheels. As the drive shaft is unbolted, the link is broken and the vehicle will roll freely. The next key step is to mark the drive shaft with paint so it can be reinstalled in the same position. I see red. Now remove the four high torque 12 point bolts from the rear universal joint saddle. I have a question. Sure. Does oil or grease run through this drive shaft? No. Okay. Didn't think it's so. It's 100% mechanical. Not lubricated. Not, it's air cooled, if nothing else. I've never heard of one that's anything but. There you go. The yellow stripe is a thread sealer. Do not clean or tap these bolts. They have a close tolerance and they would not grip properly if the threads were altered. With the bolts out, it's time to break the seat. Richard is using a pry bar to pop the rear saddle free. Be sure to support the drive shaft as you do so it doesn't fall on you. You can support the drive shaft with your leg as you slide it back and release it from the tail shaft of the transmission. Do not lay directly underneath the drive shaft as you remove it from the rear of the transmission. A small amount of oil may leak from the tail shaft seal or from the yoke. This will help prevent scoring the machine surface of the drive shaft yoke. We supported the drive shaft at a comfortable working height using a jaw horse, but resting it on the truck bed works very well also. The clips are very hard, brittle steel. To remove them in one piece, squeeze the tabs and rotate them to free them from the groove. If you pry upward, they will break, making removal more difficult. If they're very stubborn, try soaking them with penetrating oil. After breaking the first one and getting teased, I gave Richard a quick tutorial and he got the hang of it and removed all of the others without issues. Here he's learning the old fashioned universal removal method. A hammer and a large punch, in this case it's a half inch impact extension. The nickname for this method is Brute Force and Ignorance. After several attempts, I could see hot dog muscles needed a lesson in hammer operation. So I took over and showed him how it's done. It has often been said that I make the job look easy. It actually is easy with a few tools and the proper guidance along the way. Let me do it next time. You do it next time? Yeah. What the hell? Okay, so that's that one is out. Okay. Then I brought out a specialty tool. It's a glorified C clamp with a hole in one end and a solid push pin in the other. It's built with lots of beef to prevent it from bending under a load. The press was turning his arms into spaghetti, so I upped his game with a cordless impact driver so he would finish the job before midnight. Pull that outside bearing off. Yep, like that. Yep, all over. Sorry. With the yoke and saddle removed, he reclamped the saddle in the vise and screwed it out quite comfortably with the bearing press. While Richard disassembles the rear saddle, let's talk about the troubleshooting procedure for a U-joint. With the vehicle stationary, shift the vehicle from drive to reverse or from reverse to drive. If you hear a loud clunk and the vehicle does a sudden lurch, it's a good sign that you have a bad U-joint. A failed U-joint can be very costly or even dangerous. If the rear universal joint fails, the drive shaft can whip around underneath the car doing severe damage to the undercarriage and nearby components, such as the fuel lines. If the forward U-joint fails, the drive shaft can drop down and begin digging into the pavement looking for a pothole to ram into and jackknife the rear end. This would bring the vehicle to a rather fast stop. It could even lift the rear end of the vehicle into the air or severely damage the rear differential.
If you saw Richard's first pushrod cover video, you know the ginger ale colored solvent is none other than used brake fluid recovered from brake rebuild videos. It makes a fantastic degreaser and carbon remover, and the price is right. Uh, this is the part where I'll get brake fluid in my eyes. I learned that last time. Then only push the brush forward. Always push away from you if you don't want to get sprayed. If you took this job to a shop, they would not give it this level of attention. Time is money, and the faster they get it done, the more money they make. If you want the best job, start fixing your own stuff. I would never put bearings in discolored races such as these. Cleaning the snap ring grooves ensures they seat correctly. Bits of debris can be seen as it's been removed from the groove. To clean and burnish the bearing seats, Richard used a ball tip brush mounted in a hand drill. The end result was like new. It super cleaned the ring grooves at the same time. After burnishing the parts, they were cleaned again with alcohol to remove any oily residue. The residual dirty alcohol was used on the outside of the drive shaft because it would evaporate if we left it sit. Once again, nothing goes to waste. We gave the bearing surfaces a second final wash with fresh alcohol and dried them prior to assembly. The internal splines of the yoke were rinsed twice with alcohol. White lithium engine assembly lube was applied to the bearing seats to aid the press sliding the bearings home. Insert one snap ring into the groove to act as a bearing stop for the press. Long nose pliers and clean grooves made installation effortless. Rotate the clip to ensure it's fully seated. Richard is now able to install the new bearings into the clean seats with the same ratchet he was unable to muster the strength for during the removal process. No impact driver needed this time. The tail shaft was pre-lubricated with Lucas Transmission Stop Leak. It's a heavyweight transmission fluid, and it prevents a dry shaft from tearing the seal. Slide the yoke into the tail shaft, rotating it slightly to align the splines. Raise the saddle and check the alignment mark. If needed, shift the transmission into neutral and rotate the drive shaft to align the marks. Install the bolts in an X pattern and tighten and check for the proper seat. Torque the bolts in an X pattern. Take the vehicle for a small ride. Then retorque the drive shaft. From myself and Richard, thank you for watching. We hope to see you soon as I teach him how to fix more everyday vehicle repairs. If you enjoyed what you learned, please like and share. Subscribers are always welcome. Please leave a comment and I'll do my best to reply.